Don't miss the inaugural All-American Cup Team Tennis Tournament presented by Thomas J. Henry at the Freeman Coliseum in San Antonio, Texas, November 11 through 13. The All-American Cup features 10 top men's U.S. players competing on two teams, East versus West, each captained by the greatest tennis doubles team of all time, Mike and Bob Bryan. You don't want to miss this. Brother versus brother, East versus West, best versus best. Tickets on sale now at allamericantenniscup.com. Well, let's go to the hotline and let's welcome in, as we do every Tuesday here on Texas Football Today, the Texas High School Hall of Famer. You can hear him on the horn in Austin every weekday, and you can see him on High School Scoreboard Live alongside Aaron Hardigan and myself on Bally Sports Southwest at 11 p.m. Central Time. That's God's time zone. We're joined by the great Craig White. Craig. How does today find you? Uh, rosy, you know. Uh, no, I'm I'm in a sunny disposition. Okay, I'd say so. It's 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 good. I'm doing all right. You guys okay? We're doing great. Well, I, I won't speak for pickle. I'm doing good. Okay. Well, so we, we are doing well great. Then good. is the correct we, answer. Uh, no. We we know she's doing well. Lano is doing well. Let's go. They're in the rankings, uh, yes. baby. Here we go. Uh, all right. So so I, I I talked with you on the horn in Austin there a little bit. Uh, uh, earlier, and and I want to ask you a, a couple of, of similar questions. One of them is, you know, we, we talked about our rankings, and we have a new number one in Class Six A as Galena Park North Shore leapfrogs uh, Austin Westlake. Uh, there, I'm interested in your reaction to that, and and furthermore, uh, you don't have to tell me that you just. You don't have to tell tell me. Oh, I agree with you, Tepper. Or oh, you're a big idiot. But like your overall takeaway on on where we stand at the very tippy top of six A right now. Oh, I agree with you, Tepper. Oh, Yay! Tepper, you're a big idiot. No, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I I think it makes sense. And uh, I think what's what's our favorite NCAA basketball tournament uh, phrase? Body of work mm. uh, with with what North Shore has shown so far. Westlake's most impressive win, I think, was the one they just garnered, but it was the one they had to work the hardest for against Lake Travis. It's a one-point game in the fourth quarter before they pull away. Jack Kaiser take it over the football game uh, late. And, uh, and, and North Shore has been the machine that, quite frankly, we thought they would be. The beauty of this deal, and you and I got into some, uh, into some depth about this, is I don't think there's any doubt that this year – those two could be on a collision course to meet in the final four. Now there's a lot of really good teams. And that was the other thing, what we're talking about out of your top 10, eight of the six, a top 10 would be projected at this point to go division one with uh, only Denton Geyer and Highland park. I think going the D two route and then some other things could happen, but, but by and large, it would be reasonable to predict that eight of those 10 in your top, 10 out of your top 25 6a poll would go the division one route that means a tougher route for everybody westlake and north shore included but those two certainly would be favorites to be on a collision course to meet up in the state semifinals as they did a couple of years ago there's another thing in the rankings that i want to get your your take on because we kicked it around and ended up pulling the trigger on 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 sunday and it's at the very bottom of 5a division one um, where uh, Frisco Nor Frisco Lone Star crashes out after after their loss to Frisco Wakeland, first ever uh, you know win for Wakeland over Lone Star, they crash out of the rankings and opens up a spot, and we put at number ten the Lancaster Tigers, who move up into the rankings at number ten despite a loss to Longview. Now, we've seen this before, and we've seen this, uh, we saw it in, in college football. We saw it with uh, the team that you are the play-by-play -play voice of, the Texas Longhorns, who moved into the top 25 after a narrow loss to Alabama. Uh, do you have a categorical allergy to moving teams up if they play well but lose I'm, it's 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 always a it's always a, a sticky wicket and, and a bit of a, a strange thing to, to identify but where do you stand on the idea of moving up in the rankings despite a loss well i have no specific allergy to that now i will tell you if a team has a loss going into it it might force me to take an antihistamine that said <laughs> I uh, I can see the reasoning behind Lancaster moving in back into the poll, uh, albeit with uh, having had prior defeats. And given the fact that they played the unquestioned, unchallenged number one in 5A Division One, as tough as they played them on Longview's home field, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I can I can see why you would have Lancaster in the poll. I certainly would have no argument with it. 
Yeah, it was something that we really kicked around here. You know, we, we debated it. You know, we said, you know, there's a spot open in, in 5A Division One. you know. Uh, who, who do we like? We kicked around PSJ North, which got a great win over, over Edinburgh Vela, uh, a few others. But in the end, I think we, we came to the conclusion that we liked uh, what Lancaster did. And they were, you know, more or less on deck. Teams lost in front of them, and then and then you know they, they got to step up. Uh, we're talking to Craig Way, the Texas High Football Hall of Famer, here on Texas Football Today. You can involve the conversation. And hashtag TF Today. All right, Craig. It is um it, it it is an uncomfortable conversation to have though because this week in Texas high school football is the big bye week. It's a big open date. Uh, as we have a number of uh, as I believe it's m- more than a third of the state is off this week. Uh, it's 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 the largest uh, open date of the of the week. Uh, but my question for you is not to not to talk about let's let's languish in the fact there's only 500 or so Texas high school football games this week. Let's spin it positive. Is there one game before I get to my very mean game uh, that I play with you? Is there one game that you think that if you just if you were to, to hit snooze on this week you would be you would be missing? Is there one game that has you really juiced up this week? Well, I, I will keep it local this particular week, if only because I have a great curiosity to see how Maynard is surviving and thriving as a 6A school. So we're going to find out a lot about them, not only this week when they host Vandegrift, but the following week when they go to Dragon Stadium and play Round Rock. So those are two impactful games in 25-6A. And let me also say, I'm curious to see how Vandegrift handles Maynard. Mm -hmm. I've seen them both this year. And uh, I know about the uh, this the unbelievable eye popping Division One talent that's there on that Mainer squad. I also know uh, that some of the other teams, Vandegrift included, are probably a little deeper than them. After all, they just are moving into six A. So I'm really curious about that matchup. That that one uh, may have something to do with. And and there's a couple other games out of that district, but we're going to be having this conversation in ensuing weeks mm-hmm. about both 25-6A and 26-6A, especially 25-6A, about teams that might push Vandegrift also into Division One bracket, and that Vista Ridge-McNeil uh, game could have something to do with that as well, based on how those schools do going forward. But really, the vandegrift Maynard game is the one that's, that's kind of drawing a lot of attention in these parts, if for no other reason, because of what you said, that uh, you know there are other schools taking a week off that won't be playing this week, and so that one's kind of capturing some headlines. All right, and and then I, I do want to ask you about one specific team because I am I'm fascinated by this team, and I think that there's a lot of different opinions out there. And it's the number one team in four A Division One. It's Stephenville, because Stephenville's got this weird thing going where they kind of dis- they've kind of decided that defense is a little optional. And so they're just like, what if we just go and, and outscore everybody? They're 5-0, and oh, despite the fact that they're giving up something like 44 points per game. Um, I'm interested in where you're at on Stephenville. Because on one hand, the name of the game is winning, and they're doing that. But on the other hand, their defense gives me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah, uh, and, and it's understandable. And, and I will tell you this. I mean, OGs like me and some other old-timers will remember that when uh, back in uh, the early 90s, Art Bryles had a couple of teams at Stephenville that were like that, that were far more offense than they were defense, and they just outslugged you. Uh, th- this may be even beyond that a little bit in the way that they go about it. So uh, that they're, they exude a great deal of offensive confidence. So they can score whatever necessary amount of points it takes to get the win. So in that respect, uh, you know, like I said, they have a great amount of confidence and, and, uh, and, and I see it. I could, I'd see what they had. Maybe down the line, maybe that might catch up to them. I don't think it catches up to them anytime soon, including this week against Brownwood. Well, that's, that's where I'm going with this because now we're going to play the game where I'll give you three games and you got to pick one to teleport to. Now it is a thinner week. And so it, these, these games may be a little bit more off the board, but I give you a state ranked matchup in five a and the battle in the battle of the red rail, grapevine versus Colleyville heritage. You can go there. You can go to Houston to see Richmond Foster play uh, Magnolia West in a really interesting uh, district of 10, five, a division one showdown, or you can go out to Stephenville and watch a state ranked four, a matchup between Brownwood and Stephenville in the battle of 377. Which of those are you teleporting to? 
uh, it would probably be that Brownwood Stephenville game. I, j- I just said that I think that Stephenville can probably outslug Brownwood and post enough points, but that game also carries enough emotional, uh, you know, pathos with it. There's enough there's there's enough rivalry and old historical stuff that's associated with that game to add a bit more to it and. Toward that end, I am toward that end. I am intrigued by that game. I think it could be a very inter- all three of those are really good matchups. But I would probably lean towards Stephenville Brownwood uh, for the historical and entertainment value, as well as what we might see on the field. He's Craig Way. He's the Texas High School Football Hall of Famer. Hear him every weekday on the Horn in Austin, and then see him on Valley Sports Southwest on Friday night at 11 p.m. on High School Scoreboard Live alongside Aaron Hardigan and some other guy. Craig, appreciate your time, and uh, I will see you on Friday, my friend. See you later, some other guy. Uh, Pickle, enjoy that uh, start for those Yellow Jackets. Thank you, Craig. Sting him. <laughs> I don't like that. It's Craig Way, Texas High School Football Hall of Famer, joins us every Tuesday. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you would like more and to be notified when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there. You can also watch Texas Football Today every day live at noon on TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, and right here on YouTube. For more of the best coverage of Texas football in the Lone Star State, go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe.